God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Pastor Renzel Fields, pastor of Agape Worldwide Ministries here in Springfield, Virginia, and we welcome you. We thank you for joining us here for our Tuesday noonday prayer. We welcome those that are viewing via our YouTube channel, Agape Web TV, those that are listening on our conference line. Amen. Uh, we just thank God for another opportunity just to be with you in prayer. Amen. And consecration to the Lord. The Bible declares that men ought to always pray and not faint. So it's important for us never to give up, never to give in. Amen. To always keep our relationship open with the Lord. Amen. Communication open with the Lord. Amen. So we can, amen, not just ask for things or, amen, in the time of distress, call on his name, but to, to give him glory, honor, and praise, and no matter what the day comes, Amen. What comes with the day, we can give God praise, honor, and glory in everything. We ought to give him thanks. Amen. And this is the will of God concerning us. And so we just thank God for you joining us today. Amen. We're going to give you a scripture of encouragement before we go before the Lord in prayer. Amen. Be found in the book of Psalms, Psalms 37, a very familiar passage of scripture. Amen. Dealing with, amen, man and, and our, amen, uh, um, our falling, amen, deep into our situations and our problems and distress and pain and different things come, amen. The devil comes to attack us in many ways. And it's not about what the attack is, it's about how you handle it uh, and, and what you do during that crisis. Somebody said, amen, the only good thing you can take out of a crisis is your conduct during it. And so we need to know that no matter what happens, uh, God is God is in control, and God's got our got our back. God is looking out in behalf of His people, and no matter what happens to us, Amen. No matter what the circumstances are, we can give God praise, honor, and glory. We don't have to lose our minds. We can keep our faith, Amen. No matter what. So in Psalms 37, Amen. A third Psalm of instruction, uh, uh, blessings and curses, Amen. A Psalm of David, uh, the Thirteen Commandments. 10 blessings of obedience. And it starts with the first one commandment. Fret. Amen. Amen. Not to be worried. Not, not over concern yourself. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. And it says, Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like grass and wither like the green herb. Amen. Our focus, the, the, the devil comes to attack us, he comes to, amen, uh, remove our thoughts, our thought pattern, our focus from God. Uh, you see them horses when they run the race, they, they, they wear blinders, uh, amen, and on the side of their eyes, amen, so that they can keep focus on the race that is before them and not concern themselves with what's around them except what you're out there to do. And so uh, the enemy, the devil comes to attack us, to take our focus off of our purpose, and the direction that we're supposed to be going in so that we may look around, amen, and see, amen, uh, what's going on and lose focus, amen, hallelujah. And so I don't know if you ever took long journeys in traveling, but when we used to travel with the church in different times, amen, they would have fruit stands and they have all kinds of stuff on the side of the road as you travel, amen. And so uh, oftentimes you wanted to stop, and if, but they had multiples. So if you stop, you wouldn't get to where you were trying to go. Amen. By the time you get there, you'd be late because you're stopping every five minutes here and there and there. And amen. We're on the road to get to where we're trying to get to. Amen. And so uh, the distractions, amen, sometimes can, can cause us not to reach our destination and, and, and not at the right time either. Amen. Uh, to be late and miss out on what we went to do. And so this first verse says, fret not thyself because of evildoers. And so we need to understand they're evildoers. They're doing evil. And so why would you give them more attention, more power than what they need? Amen. Their, their intent is evil. Evil doers. So what's coming from them is evil. The attack is evil because it's coming from an evil person. Don't pay attention. Don't give that place. Give no place to the devil. It says resist the devil and he'll flee. It said, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Sometimes David said, why do the heathen rage? Why do they imagine a vain thing? And sometimes it seems like people that are doing evil are prospering. And they're getting away with, amen, doing wrong. Amen. They're not getting away. Huh? They're just getting by. 
Amen. Because God's going to judge sin. God is going to, amen, take care of sin once and for all. Amen. Hallelujah. And we get to see that in the second verse. It says, for they shall soon be cut down like grass and wither as green herb. Amen. Psalms 31 and 2. Amen. So we don't fret ourselves because of evildoers. We don't be envious against the workers of iniquity. Amen. Don't focus on the evildoers. Don't work on, don't focus on the iniquity because we will think that the iniquity, wickedness, or amen, amen, uh, wrongdoing, willful wrongdoing against God, then, then, then we'll think that's the way to, to succeed. And you see many books, amen, and people write books and tell you how to succeed. And, and, and not only do you have to be smart and intelligent and, and, and do the marketing and all that stuff, you have to crush your enemies. Amen. You have to do something against the other competitors that, that are, amen, uh, trying to gain the same market share that you are. Amen. But in, the, in, the, in our race with God, amen, there is no market share. Amen. There's a praise share. We, we come into his house. We thank God. The Bible talks about the spirit of emulations. Amen. And that's the spirit of competition. And so oftentimes we think, people, think of people as our competitors. And they're not. We, they are my brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I thank God for the ones that are doing good. And I pray for the ones that's not doing so good. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we just thank God. And it's not our job to judge and condemn. Amen. Anybody. It's our job to pray. Amen. Old song says, don't be angry. Just pray for me. Amen. Hallelujah. If, you, if I dare to be walking with my head up high, if my hands do not greet you, when I pass you by, if by chance I ignore you, or don't hear your cry. Amen. Don't get in your feelings. Don't get angry. Amen. Just pray for me. And that's what we ought to do. We ought to, as believers, lock arms and build up one another in this most holy faith and not turn down. There's enough people tearing down. They destroy. They, they good destroyers. Amen. But, but you got the construction crew and you got the demolition crew. And so the demolition crew is not to build anything. Their job is to tear things up. Amen. And so you got people with the spirit of demolition. Amen. They come to destroy. Amen. The thief come but to steal, kill, and to destroy. Amen. But Jesus said, I am here. I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Get with the builders. Get with the construction workers. They're there to build up, lay a foundation, and build. Amen. Hallelujah. On that foundation. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. For they shall soon be cut down like grass. They're going to be destroyed. The evil doers, the, the, the workers of iniquity, the one that's bringing evil, what's going to happen, the end, the end result to what they're doing, they're going to be destroyed. They're going to be uh, <laughs> destroyed, amen, and, and demolished. Hallelujah. And so, uh, for they shall soon be cut down like grass and with as the green herb. Trust, here's the, his next command. First command is fret, not. Amen. Don't concern yourself. Don't get angry. Don't get upset. Don't pay attention to it. Amen. Don't fret it, the old folk used to say. Amen. The, the second command in the third verse, trust in the Lord. We ought to trust God. We have to believe and know, but trust in an action on what we believe. This is an opportunity to, to, to act on what we say. Amen. Hallelujah. It works right along with faith. Faith without works is dead. Faith with works is trust. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And we do. Hallelujah. And do good. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord. <laughs> And act like you know him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The fool, the Bible says, have said in the heart, there is no God. So when you act in foolish, you act in as if God can't, God does not exist, and God can't judge you and condemn you for your sin and the things that you are doing against his will. And so we don't, we don't, we don't act as we don't act foolishly because we know God is real. Amen. And we know that, amen, that we need to serve him as as his as his children. So we need to trust in the Lord. Not only trust in him and know that he's going to bring it to pass, but we should also, amen, do good. And says, so shalt thou dwell in the land. You, know, you can't be moved, won't be evicted. You'll be stable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. God's going to bless you. I always tell the saints, faith will feed the journey. Amen. But you got to take the journey. You got to go, amen, and travel that, that pilgrim way. And if you take the, the journey then God, amen, will feed you because you're going down the right street. You ain't got to worry about the stands. Amen. You got enough with you, amen, on this journey to, uh, to sustain you through the journey. What God has given to you is going to take you through it. 
Amen. Hallelujah. You shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you. Then you're going to be witness unto me. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and, and to the uttermost parts of the, of the earth. And so that's what we need. We have what we need. We're praying for what we need. Amen. How did God give me this? God, give, No, you have it. Hallelujah. We don't know what to pray for as we ought. And so, so once we have the power of God down on the inside of us, we need to understand as the people of God that you have everything you need. You got Jesus. That's why Murray was so mad at him. Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's why they was upset because you're not here. You have to be physically here. He said, I won't be with you always. I got to get out of here. I got to leave. Hallelujah. But you got to, you want to do greater works than me because I go to my father. I'm going to work on behalf of, of, of my people. Hallelujah. And upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So the second command is to trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fled, fed. The delight is the third command. Get happy about serving God. Hallelujah. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Hallelujah. We need to get happy and enjoy. Hallelujah. I, I don't under, I never understood why believers and people, we had Christ, we have salvation, we have an eternal home. We got the spirit of God down on the inside of us. God is love. And you mean to tell me I got to walk around angry and upset and my lips turned up like I'm chewing on lemons all day, every day. Hallelujah. I got to be, you got to be happy. In the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy and at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. The, the pleasures that God had designed for you to enjoy. Hallelujah. And so we just thank God that we can be happy. And we need to get happy not only because, oh, it's, it's Sunday, I got to go to church. Oh, the pastor said I got to read my Bible every day. I got to do devotion. And I mean, if you look at it like that, it's not, you waste it. I don't want to mess with you in your church, but you're wasting your time. Hallelujah. You're wasting your time. You need to come before his presence. Hallelujah. With singing. Know you that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us. And we, not we ourselves. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so we need to know that when we talking to God, we in the best place that we can be. And we need to delight ourselves. Enjoy. You in a relationship with somebody, are you going, and you talking to them like you, like you all, of, you know, down and out and, and no, no, no. How, how you doing? So glad to see you. Couldn't wait. I anticipated, eagerly waited, amen, for the opportunity to see you again. Amen. And that's how we ought to approach God. Lord, I'm just so glad to see you. I'm glad I'm able to talk to you. Amen. I'm glad we in relationship with each other. Amen. And I can just pray and talk to the Lord. I can call him when I need him. Father, Father, up in heaven, I can go to God in prayer. Hallelujah. I can talk to the Lord about what's going on with me. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about my trouble. He will hear my faintest cry and answer by him. But that's the part I like. He'll answer it. Hallelujah. When you feel that prayer will turn and you know that the fire is burning. Just a talk with Jesus. Just a little talk with Jesus will make it all right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we need to get happy about what our serving God and delight ourselves. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know what you're in it for. Amen. If you're not happy in Jesus alone, amen. If you're not praising God, if we're not lifting our hands in the sanctuary, we're not entering his gates with thanksgiving, and we don't praise God, and you're not happy about serving God, you need, somebody need to take inventory. Amen. About what, 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 what your purpose is in your relationship. Amen. Are you in it for what you can get out? Amen. Back in the day, we would say, you believe in the hereafter. Amen. If you ain't here after what I'm here after, you'll be here after I'm gone. That was an old line back in the day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so some people are here after something. They need something. And, and their only reasons and their only connection to God is what they need from God. That's a bad relationship. That's a terrible, that, you dating somebody because of their money. You dating somebody because of their fame and their status. You dating somebody to tell everybody else you dating that person. Hallelujah. And some, and some of our relationship with God is just like that. I pray. I talk to God. I have black friends. I have this friend. I have this. You, you want to justify your existence. But when you're in a relationship, you don't have to explain anything to anybody. You know who you are. You know who you serve. Hallelujah. I'm in relationship and I'm happy in my relationship. You ever ask somebody to try to talk you out of what, your relationship? This, no, I, I don't care what you say. Hallelujah. You're not in this relationship. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So that's why when we delight ourselves, how he knows that you like him because of him. And it's the same like when he fed the 5,000 and he left with the disciples and the people came over and followed him over there. Amen. Hallelujah. Maybe the disciples thought, hey, they follow him all the way over here. Jesus was getting some rest. Amen. And he said, you're not here for me. You're here for the barley and the loaves. You're here for what I can do for you. Hallelujah. And he said to, to prove it, amen, he said, except you drink my blood and eat my flesh, you'll have no part with me. I want nothing to do with you except you eat my blood. Hallelujah. I mean, drink my blood and eat my flesh. I don't want nothing to do with you. And they said they walked away. Hallelujah. 5,000 walked out of the church in one day, in one moment. And he looked at his disciples and said, will you also go away? Peter looked at him and said, where else can we go? Thou has the words of eternal life, proving that Peter was in the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. And the people was in the flesh. They was in it for what they could get out of it. But if I'm in relationship with God because I know he's the creator of the universe, not because he can heal me and deliver me and get me out of jail and get me out of, amen, circumstances and problems and situations. I just love the man. Hallelujah. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. Hallelujah. I just love the Lord because he's God. He's the creator. He made me. He knows me. He made me in his image and in his likeness. And every day that I live, I move toward that image and that likeness. And move away from the darkness and the and the and the mess and the muck and the mire of this flesh and move closer and closer to the spirit of God. Because God is spirit. And in him is no darkness at all. Hallelujah. So we just thank God that we can delight. I'm sorry to take that much time with delighting. Hallelujah. But we need to get happy about serving God. Hallelujah. This 37th chapter of the book of Psalms. Amen. The fourth verse. Delight thyself in the also. Amen. In addition to trusting God and fret not thyself because of evildoers, but you need to also delight yourself, hallelujah, in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. The fifth verse, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. Thank you, Jesus. And he shall bring it to pass. God's going to bring it to pass the thing that you need. How he gonna bring? He gonna, I'm going to get into that in the sixth verse. Amen. But we need to make that commitment. Amen. We need to honor what we say. We need to hold to that agreement. You make an agreement with anybody. You got to stay on your word. You got to stick to your word. You said it. You got to stand by your word. Your words mean something. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we got to make a commitment. We, we use a lot of lip service. We do a lot of talking, pontificating. Hallelujah. We use a lot of words and, and say a lot of things to get what we want from people. Hallelujah. But when we with God, God knows everything. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. He omniscient. He knows everything. He's omnipotent. He has all power. Hallelujah. And so, amen. He knows that you mean it. He knows when you don't mean it. Just like them, some of them relationships, you said all these nice things. Hey, you don't mean that. Amen. You're in trouble. So you're just trying to say, trying to get out of trouble, get out the doghouse. Hallelujah. But if we commit our way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And here's what he's going to bring, the sixth verse. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Hallelujah. And once he brings forth himself, he's in relationship. Amen. He's bringing forth his righteousness. Amen. He's bringing forth, amen, his righteousness as, as the light and the judgment as the noonday. Amen. The noonday. We're in noonday right now. Noonday, amen, is the, the, the hottest time, the, the brightest, the brightest uh, time of the sun during the day. Amen. Is at noon time. So he will be at his strength. Amen. Hallelujah. He will be at his strength. Hallelujah. And all the day long. And once we have that strength, once we have the power of God, hallelujah. The seventh verse says we can rest. Oh, God, thank you. Hallelujah. We can rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in their own way, in his way. Because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Amen. They make an attack. No, but no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Hallelujah. So those wicked devices are not going to work. Hallelujah. Because you're in relationship with God. You're in relationship with him. And so there's nothing that can come against you that will overtake you. Hallelujah. He said, because if I be for you, I'm more than the whole world against you. And so we, and once we rest in them, hallelujah, we, we, we can relax and we can, amen, hallelujah, enjoy the, the goodness of the Lord. Somebody said, I would have fainted except I believe to see the goodness of the Lord 
in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, so uh, he, he, we don't have to worry about that. We don't have to fret ourselves because of him who prospers in his own way. That he brought those things against you, not for you to prosper, not for you to gain an edge, but for his, the person's will to be done. Amen. They came to attack you for you to be attacked. They cursed you so you could be cursed. That's their intent. Again, like I said in the first verse, they're evildoers. They are workers of iniquity. What do you expect? Hallelujah. Like the dog and the scorpion. The story, the joke about the dog and the scorpion. And amen. They wanted to get across the river. Hallelujah. And, 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 and the dog said, we're going to sting me. Hallelujah. So he said, no, I need to get across that river. Can you take me across the river? So the dog said, okay. And the scorpion got on the back of the dog's back. Amen. And the dog started swimming, swimming across the river. And the scorpion started stinging him. And, and he said, why did you sting me? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die and you're going to die because you're going to be swept up by the river. He said, I'm a scorpion. It's what I do. Hallelujah. So, so you know, they're evildoers. There's workers of iniquities. So the end is to bring destruction into your life. Hallelujah. And it says, you'll be cut off. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Amen. That's We got the cease from anger. Forsake wrath and fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. We can't become what's coming after us. You can't become evil because evil is coming to attack you. Hallelujah. I'm just giving you some understanding and some, and some hopefully some encouragement. Amen. In our prayer today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He says, cease from anger, forsake wrath, fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. The ninth verse. For evil doers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, hallelujah, and the wicked shall not be, yea, they shall diligently consider his place, and it shall be, it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth and delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The 11th verse, 37 Psalms. Amen. Letting us know, giving us some, some instruction on how Amen. To stay close to God, to stand the storm, to stand the attack of the enemy. Amen. The evildoers, they, they're working for Satan. They Sometimes they may not understand that. They think they're just getting you back or their uh, insecurity within themselves or whatever the reason the attack coming. Amen. I used to have a boss, amen, that did not allow the employees to give them excuses. You wasn't at work. He did not allow. He didn't want to hear it. He said, and his famous line was, excuses don't change results. And so no matter what you tell me, and sometimes they had it already, amen, had everything ready to tell him what happened. And he said, excuses don't change results. No matter what you say to me, it didn't bring you to work yesterday. And so, uh, uh, so I don't want to hear it. He didn't want, he never wanted to hear, amen, excuses why he didn't, wasn't at work. And so, uh, excuses don't change the results. And what we know, need to know as, as a people of God and as believers in Christ Jesus, amen, we have a charge to keep as believers. We have a, a, a job. We have a, a, a destiny to fulfill. And the enemy comes to attack us, amen, to take us off path, off the right path, and puts us on a negative path. Amen. That we may turn and focus on the enemy more than we focus on what our destiny is. And so the Satan comes to attack us and remove us because, amen, he doesn't want us to be saved. Amen. Like Paul told Timothy, take heed to thyself, to the doctrine, give thyself holy to them, and thou wilt both save thyself and them that hear thee. I don't want nobody else to be saved. Satan don't want nobody else to be saved. Amen. He wants everybody to join him at the at the at the pool party down by the, the 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 lake of fire. Hallelujah. He wants everybody to be lost like him. And so David was letting us know that we shouldn't be fretting ourselves. We shouldn't be worried about the evildoers and not focus on the evildoers. One, because God got you. God's going to take care of you. And two, we don't want what they're doing to us to become us. And we are retaliating back and forth and back and forth. And you caught up in some nonsense. Amen. Hallelujah. And losing focus on God's purpose in your life. Amen. So this 37 Psalms letting us know that we need to, amen, be uh, a blessing and, and not a curse. We need to be, use the favor of God and in our relationship with God. Amen. Live a life for God 
and not to live a life according to what the devil is doing or anybody is doing against you. Amen. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord today. God will bless you. God will deliver you. God will make ways out of nowhere. He will open doors that seem closed. And as we go before the Lord in prayer, I'm grateful for those that have been calling in with their prayer requests. Amen. Facebook sending in prayer requests. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, and we're going to, amen, pray, pray for those with autism. Somebody sent in a prayer request uh, for autism, healing, and delivering someone that's sick. Amen. Uh, some people have been going through it. People are really going through hardships. And we as believers need to start praying, amen, and talking to God in behalf of his people. Amen. I, I was sick and you didn't feed me. I was naked. You didn't clothe me. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, when, would I, when did that happen? Uh, as often you do the least of my little ones, you do it also unto me. Amen. He said, depart me from me, you workers of iniquity. I knew you not. Amen. Hallelujah. He didn't condemn the one that was naked. He didn't condemn the one, hallelujah, that was in jail. Amen. He didn't condemn the one that was hungry. He condemned the one that did not respond to the problem. Hallelujah. Did not meet, come to help meet the need. Amen. Of their, of their neighbor, of their friend. And so what we need to do, and we may not have money, as, as Peter, amen, James walked into the temple and said, amen, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. I can pray. Amen. If I can't do anything else, I can pray for you. Amen. So that's what we come to do today. We're going to pray for you, praying for all those that send in prayer requests, those that didn't have an opportunity to send in prayer requests. But we're going to pray for you, amen, right now in Jesus' name. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, God, we ask your blessings upon your people. We ask you to touch and deliver right now. Make a way out of nowhere. Open doors to seem closed. Move in the lives of your people this noonday hour. Amen. You see your righteousness has come, come forth. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and we just thank God that it's going to come forth. Amen. Hallelujah. As the light and the and the judgment as the noonday. And we just, at this noonday hour, we just thank God for you, Lord. And we just thank you for your blessings. And Lord God, and we ask you to meet the needs of your people, Lord God. There's so many that are in distress. There's so many that are in pain, haven't recovered financially, physically, mentally, emotionally. Lord God, in every aspect of life, we come up short, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Without you, we are lost. We are nothing. And we have come up short every time. But you make up the shortage, Lord God. You you make you able to do exceedingly abundantly above that which you can ask or even think, Lord God. And we ask you to bless, touch, and deliver, Lord God. Hallelujah. In the lives of your people, those that sent in their requests, meet the needs of your people, Lord God. Those that support, amen, this ministry, Lord God. We ask that you continue to bless them, amen, Lord God. They're doing miraculous things and marvelous things, Lord God, for this church and for this ministry. And, Lord God, and we just thank you for that. And we ask your blessings upon them right now in the name of Jesus. Move in the lives of your people, Lord God, hallelujah. Bless this community that you blessed us to be, Lord God, hallelujah, in, Lord Jesus. We hear that everybody's coming, amen, for different reasons, Lord God. But we just thank God that you're here, Lord God, the Prince of Peace is here. Hallelujah. We thank God that you're already here. We don't have to wait for you to arrive. You're already here. And we just thank you for your blessings. We ask you to bless everyone that's viewing this. Bless everyone that's listening today. Amen. On our conference line, we ask you to move in their lives and whatever their prayer request is, whatever their need is, right here, right now. Lord God, we speak healing and deliverance right now. In the name of Jesus, we speak the power of God. Hallelujah. Over the lives of your people, Lord Jesus. We need your glory. We need your power. We need your anointing right here, right now, Lord God. Not that we can boast that we have it. Lord God, hallelujah, that we may be delivered from the hands of the enemy. Lord God, hallelujah, that we may be come through all the, amen, the evildoers and workers of iniquity. We know there's more coming, hallelujah, but it's all right now. Lord God, and we just speaking, Lord God, that we be ever delivered because we are ever in relationship with you. Lord God, we're, we're walking up the king's highway, and we ask you to bless, touch, and deliver our journey. And let us not be distracted by the cares of this world, but stay focused. Lord God, you say, him I will keep in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on me. And Lord God, so we want to keep our mind stayed on you and stay in that perfect peace. You shall give us the scripture just told us. Amen. The abundance. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The meek shall inherit the earth. Hallelujah. And, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. And we just thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth. We thank you for your love. We thank you for a relationship with you. Lord God, these and all blessings we ask in Jesus' name, I pray. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. And amen. Amen. God bless you today. We thank you for 
joining us here at Agape for our noonday prayer every Tuesday noontime. You're welcome, amen, to tune in, amen, to our Agape Web TV, amen, or you can call the uh, conference number. You can hear it live, amen, or view it later, uh, this video at a later time. But we just thank you for, amen, joining us, amen. Tomorrow night is our prayer, I mean, our Bible class. Every Wednesday night, we're in Bible class. We're in the book of Leviticus. We're about to come out of it, amen. But we continue uh, to go through the Bible, verse by verse and scripture by scripture, amen. And so we ask you to help us, amen, hallelujah. Take the journey with us, amen, in the name of Jesus. And uh, this Thursday night, amen, at 7.30, we will be at Pastor Cotton's church, amen, over on Forson Road. Uh, a cornerstone Bible Way Church, amen, in their anniversary. So if you're available, come on out, amen, and uh, let's uh, honor this great man and woman of God in this in this great church, amen, in, uh, over in the Gum Springs area of Alexandria, Virginia. Hallelujah. And so we thank God for that opportunity. And Sunday morning, we'll be back here at Agape, amen, worshiping, praising God, for the things that he has done. I'll be preaching on supernatural. Amen. Supernatural. Amen. This Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Amen. Unless the Lord change it. But that's what he said to me so far. Amen. And we ask the saints that's coming to bring your canned goods and non-perishable for our Thanksgiving uh, giveaway. We have our food boxes we give away on the 22nd of November. Giving thanks at Thanksgiving. Uh, you're welcome to come out to that service. Amen. This um November at um, 3 p.m. Amen. And so um, we ask the saints when you come by, come to church this week, uh, this month, uh, November, the month of November, to uh, bring your canned goods. And those that want to stop by and drop off, we're going to have a box outside that you can put the canned goods in. Amen. And non-perishable so that we can give away food uh, at Thanksgiving. Amen. And so uh, continue to pray for us in that endeavor. Uh, also, this Sunday evening at 3 o'clock, We'll be honoring, amen, Elder Charles Fields. Uh, we ask the saints and everybody else to come on out and let's honor this great man of God who's been a blessing, amen, to this church and many other churches and ministries. And I just wanted to bless this man of God because he's, he's a true man of God, amen, and I wanted to bless him, amen, in the name of Jesus. And uh, we have a communion on Sunday as well, First Sunday communion. If you haven't communed with the Lord, you can do it every first Sunday here at Agape Worldwide Ministry. So we ask your blessings upon us as we pray for you in Jesus' name. Our closing scripture coming from the book of 1 Timothy, first chapter, beginning uh, at the 17th verse. It says, Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Let the church say, Amen. Hug somebody. Tell them that you love them. This is the Agape Way. God bless you.